going on, movie crew? It's your boy Lionheart9472, and I'm back again with another review video. Today, we're going to be reviewing Jordan Peele's Us. Now, Us, from what I've been reading about everything, it's not going to be like Get Out. We thought Get Out was actually a horror film. Uh, he tw put on Twitter that Us, I'm sorry, that Get Out was actually a documentary. Us is a horror movie. Now, um, I'm excited mainly because it's like I feel like one of the first people who ever saw like Michael Myers, like the original Michael Myers movie, or like I'm sorry, the original Halloween or the original um, Friday the Thirteenth or or, or uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, like you know the first people that actually stepped into the theater because this is a new writer, new director, new producer on the scene, and this is a different horror film that we've never seen before. So I feel like. In, in a way, like, you know, one of the first people to see his work as far as uh, his, his, uh, his his horror film making goes. So I'm super, super, super excited. I'm super excited for that. Um, still a little bit under the weather. But, um, yeah, you know, when I when I do go see a movie, I, I like to try to make the most out of my experience. So we are on the way to downtown Disney again. All right. So you guys saw Downtown Disney last time. If you didn't, go back and check out that review I did on Captain Marvel. Um, I like to do my reviews a little differently. Yeah, so I like to do my reviews a little bit differently than what other people do their reviews. But, uh, yeah, anyway, we're on the road again, and we will be back um, when we get to Downtown Disney. So I'll see y'all then. Peace. All right, so running late. But uh, we're here in the parking garage, though. And it's a lot lighter than it was before. Shout out to Daylight Savings Time. Um, but yeah, we're about to walk into this theater, filming. Um, let me know if y'all like these like vlog type of like beginning reviews or if y'all just want me to get straight to it or if y'all want me to break it up into two different videos. Um, yeah, let me know what y'all feeling. All right, so I will see y'all. Truthfully, when we get, now for real, for real, when we get to the theaters, I'm sorry. All right, y'all. I know I said that you guys would, I would see you guys when we got to the theater, but I just remembered that I can't remember if you guys were able to see everything from like downtown Disney, like this end of it. So it's more light, so I decided to go ahead and bring that camera out one time though for y'all. Playing Hollywood, no time out. Dumbo with it. All right. So, sorry that I didn't film us going into the movie. We're just not getting out the movie. On our way home now, and I will give my official review. But all I'm saying is, Jordan Peele, you were the craziest so big. I'll see y'all when we get home. Alright guys, we're back home now. That being said, I am about to give you my initial review of the movie Us, directed by Jordan Peele. Alright, so like I said, this is the initial review, my thoughts, my initial review and my initial thoughts on it. You know, after this, I'll, you know, go back like I did with Captain Marvel and do more research and get more of an in-depth review on it. Um, and like, you know after everything had, was said and done, right? But this is my initial thoughts. This was my initial, like, my re... In a way, it's my, like, my initial reaction to the movie, right? Um, anyway, I'm going to get right into it. So, uh, the movie opens up with the main character... Character? Character. Character, um, Lupita. Well, her... Uh, she's played... By, well, Ad Ad Adelaide is played by Lupita. So it shows off a little Lupita, right? And I'll, and I'll put up a clip of the of a little Lupita right here. And that's her when she was younger. So like we're talking 1986, right? So they're at, at Santa Cruz, they're at the beach, right? And uh, they're playing these carnival games. It's, it's uh, Adelaide and her parents, right? So she gets lost and she goes into like this little fun house thing, right? So when she goes to the fun house, that's when you see the second version of her. Alright? So that's why I was like, well, what? But then it just cuts out and then it goes straight to present day. 
All right, so like I said, I'm trying not to give too many spoilers on this, um, but I'm going to try to also stick straight to the point and hit the main part to it. <coughs> Excuse me. So in the next clip, you uh, they show you Gabe, played by Winston Duke. They show you Zora, played by Shadi Wright. They also show you Jason, which is a little boy, played by Evan uh, Alex. So they show you the whole family, and it shows them in a car, right? So it looks like they're on the way like, to a beach house or a lake house, whatever you want to call it. And on the way to the lake house, they get there, um, and Lupita or Adelaide, she's feeling like something's off, right? Like, she's just not really feeling herself. Um, that being said, they go on, and they meet um, a family, right? So this family... Uh, I'm trying to remember all the names here, but uh, no, I remember one name. The wife of uh, Gabe's best friend or Gabe's friend is uh, Kitty. So Kitty and Gabe's friend, right? They're a couple and they have two twin daughters. So they meet up with them at the beach, right? Now off rip, uh, Adelaide or Lapita, she's like, I ain't really feeling the beach. You feel me? Like, I ain't trying to go there. Like she, cause she had PTSD from when she got, you know, when she saw her previous self. When she was a little kid, like she couldn't talk for years. So um, she had like PTSD from that time when she got lost and she like ventured away from her, her from her family. Um, she had PTSD from that. So she was like, I don't want to go back to the place where, you know, I got like severely mentally messed up. Like I ain't trying to do that, bro. But, you know, once they do like, come on, bro, like, come on, babe. I already made these plans. And, you know, Jason. Uh, our son is excited. The whole family is excited. I feel like it would be really great for the family. Blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> so, uh, excuse me, y'all. I'm still kind of like sick under the weather. But um, more of the story, they all go to the beach, right? So that's why I said like they meet, they meet with the family. Um, now, on the way to the beach, they see that some like guy. Oh, sorry. I'm all over the place. But with, so now follow me here, right? Follow me. All right, so when uh, Adelaide was little, right, remember I was telling you that uh, it was a flashback, right? So if you see in the previews, that little girl is a flashback of Adelaide. So that little girl sees like this homeless guy and he's holding up a sign with the Bible verse, Jeremiah eleven eleven, right? So when he's holding up that Bible verse, right, they're driving to the beach, right? So as they're driving to the beach, they see the same, well, she sees the guy who had, was was holding the Jeremiah eleven eleven sign? They're taking him off in the, in an the ambulance because I'm pretty much guessing that he's dead, right? So some way somehow he got killed. Um, anyway, so now they're they're with the family. Where they're with Gabe's friend and uh, his wife and his two girls at the beach, right? Jason, uh, like Gabe and, and Adelaide's little boy, he goes to the restroom. So after he gets out of the restroom, he sees the guy. Standing like this, and I'll put up a clip now. So he's standing like that. All right, remember that guy, okay? Remember that figure. So anyway, he's like weird or whatever, right? So he turns around, and he goes back with the family. Now, at this point, the Peter's like, yo, where my baby at? Where, where Jason at? Like, what's going on? Remember, because she has PTSD. She don't even want to really be here like that, you feel me? So she's like, oh, oh my God. And so like when she finds Jason, she like sprints to him like she hasn't seen this dude in like years. And like he, she's really rough with him. Like, huh, you don't tell me where you're going. With, you, don't, you don't go anywhere without telling me. You hear me? Like you know how all moms do. But this this seemed different, right? So that was like my initial. I'm like, oh, okay. Every mom is like low-key like that with their babies. But this eh, seems kind of off. So anyway, now we're going back to the house, right? Go back to the house. Um, oh, Gabe bought a bought a boat. So remember that Gabe bought a boat. Gabe bought a little tiny shitty ass boat. Um, <clears throat> go back to the house. Right, and it's nighttime now. So uh, she's putting everybody to bed. Right, like you see Gabe. He's sitting in his chair and he's watching the highlight games of the Giants. Um, oh, some sort of San Francisco Giants, the baseball team. And she's like, you know, Lupita, <coughs> excuse me, or Adelaide, she's like getting things ready, <coughs> but on her face, <coughs> you can see that things are off, excuse me, let me take a quick sip of water. Ah. 
good. High quality H2O. So, she on her face, and something's off. So, boom. Puts, uh, tell, goes in, tells Zora, phone off, night, night time, time to go to sleep, right? It's like 11 o'clock. Um, so, Zora goes to sleep, boom. Then she goes to Jason's room, tells Jason, like, everything, you stick with me, I'll keep you safe. I didn't know what happened to you at the beach. Like, a pervert could have took you, terrorists could have took you, sex trafficking, all the other shit that's going on, you know what I'm saying? Uh, got R. Kelly running around here. Um, anything could have happened to you, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, she says to him, stick with me, I'll keep you safe. So now, it, it switches back to where Gabe and Adelaide are in the bedroom, right? They're in their bedroom. And you know he trying to he trying to get in the mood. He like come on now, nah. like trying to trying to turn on Mister Nasty time. And she's sitting here and she's like, man, something feels off. Like I know we came up here last year, but this year feels so off. And so that's when he she tells him about the experience that she had at the beach when she was a little girl and her and her family went. So when she got you know the time she got lost in in the funhouse and, and that's how she got PTSD. So he's like, you know, trying to make light of the situation, trying to make her feel better. Uh, she ain't really digging. She like, bro, you ain't even listen to me. So at that moment, right, like right after she tells that story, the lights turn off. All right, so that's when shit about to get hella real, fam. Lights turn off. So everybody freaking the fuck out. They're like, oh, what the fuck? And then little Jason gonna pop his little ass up, and then I jump. Everybody in the crowd jump because we just like we already know what's about to happen. So. Um, that's when Jason's like, uh, there's a family in our driveway. Y'all seen the trailer, bruh. That's how you know shit's about to go down. All right. So you see that. So he says that. And so now you see the whole family. They're going to the front of the house and they're looking outside. They see the family, right? And it's a dude, a woman, uh, looks like a little figure that's kind of like, on all fours, like kind of crouched down, and then you see another little girl. Gabe goes outside. He's like, "Hey, what's up? What you want? Like, what, what what's good?" Um, they don't say nothing. So he goes back inside, and Lupita or Adelaide, she's freaking the fuck out. Like she's like, "Oh my god!" Like, no, like like she's freaking. She's like, "I'm calling nine one right now." He's like, "Bro, why are you calling nine one one?" I'm like, "It's just a family. We don't know what's going on." I don't agree with him. I think she she's right. Like she should have called nine one one. Like bump all that other stuff, right? F what he talking about. So uh, he goes back in. He's like, yeah, call nine one one. She's like, fool, I've already done that. You late to the party, fam. So now he gets the bat, and that's when he says the infamous line: If you want to get crazy, we can get crazy. Now after he says that, right? That's when. Everybody lets go. They're holding hands at first. They let go of holding hands. These little niggas like this, this scatter around, right? Like, like they said, like they showed in the trailer. They scatter around, right? And you're like, what the heck? Whoa, whoa, hold on now. And the other two start walking down the hill. So you see this big, tall dude walking down the hill. You feel me? So, um, get inside. They lock the door, right? Well, it's them. Right? So we saw in the trailer. It's them in the shadows. So they know where the spare key is. How about homie got the spare key, open up the door. Meanwhile, my boy Gabe, he trying to, his best, you know what I'm saying? He should have hit the gym a little bit more, but he trying his best to keep old buddy from getting in the, do in the door. How about that bat that Gabe had? Bro, buddy grabbed the bat, hit Gabe in the knee, broke his whole shit. I'm talking here. ACL tearing everything. I was in the theater grabbing my knee, like screaming out in pain. It was terrible. All right. So he's on the ground now. This nigga useless. Right. So now it's Lupita and the two kids. Mind you, when they run into the house grabbing niggas up, like Lupita's just yanking, yanking kids. I ain't never seen no woman yank a person like that, but she was grabbing it with a force. I'm t Lupita is a great A actor, man. I actress. Shout out to her. Lupita, I. Shout out to you. You just you make the 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 the, the character come to life. You feel me? Um, but so now it's just the, it's just them three, like two kids and 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 and, and, and their mom, right? Fending for themselves. So Gabe gets in the house, like well, you know, the clone Gabe or or you know the other Gabe gets in the house. <clears throat> now on top of that, then you get Lupita 
the second Lupita, Lupita number two, breaks in the house, right? Then you get the other two little, the, you get uh, Zora, little, you know, the other Zora and the other Jason that breaks into the house. The other, you know, the dude that got the white mask on his face. So they go, so now everybody, Gabe finally stood his punk ass up, and now everybody's sitting on the couch, and they're looking at themselves, right? So they're looking at the people in the red. Now, uh, Lupita number two is what we're going to call her for now. She goes on, and she's talking and talking and talking, and she tells a story about how it was a princess, or yeah, princess, something like that, and the shadow. The princess, uh, 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 you know, for Christmas, she got cushy toys, love, and stuff like that. The shadow got sharp toys, blades, and when they touched him, it cut her. And pretty much how she, you know, Lupita number one, had, well, Adelaide number one had uh, the good life, and she had the total opposite, you know. She had a, then she uh, met a, uh, prince, the princess met a prince, and the 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 shadow met this evil person. Um, and the princess had a, a first daughter, and uh, the shadow had a monster. And um, how you know they had a C, uh, the princess had a C section, and the mom, the the shadow had to do cut herself open, and also. The sun got burnt, right? So talking about just talking about the family, pretty much. So um, they're what you call tethered together. Uh, they never really explain how they're tethered or how they're clones or whatever, but they are. The government somehow cloned everyone, so they're tethered together. So whatever this side is going through, the other side is also going through. Shit blew my mind. You know what I'm talking about? Like it was crazy. So. Um, anyway, we're going to fast forward a little bit. Like I said, keep it real brief. Um, but yeah, so now we know that the us or the second, the, the clone versions, the crazy ones <coughs> of the family, they're um, connected because they're clones, right? So I'm going to fast forward a little bit. But um, a lot of action, I'm not going to get into it, all the action, because I do want y'all to go see it. But um, a lot of action goes on between when they found out who the clones were, that they that they have clones of themselves, and to the next part that I'm about to tell you about. So after the out of action and all the ass kicking and all the killing and blood and guts is going to spew out. So if you're squeamish, be careful. Um, now we fast forward to when they're going to be headed south. So the, the whole goal, right, they're on the news and stuff now. The news says that they don't know what the hell is going on, but everybody's holding hands, right? So, everybody's holding hands. Remember that when you go see. Remember that everybody's holding hands. Because I didn't even really touch on that. But like I said, this is a quick review. I'm not going to give you every little detail into it because I do want you to go see the movie and enjoy it. Um, so, everybody's holding hands. So, the news don't really know what the hell is going on. Um, now, we fast forward and Jason, right? The good Jason gets taken. So, uh, uh, the evil Lapita or Lapita number two takes Jason. Oh, yeah, I want to call Lapita. I don't want to call Adelaide because it's so hard for me. I, I don't remember. But, um, yeah, Lapita the, uh, takes Jason, right? The good Jason. So now, takes Jason and takes him into the, like this, like the fun house, right? The fun house that Lapita went to when she was a kid. So now Lapita sees. Herself and the other self, and uh, I don't want to give too much away, but um, the good, the good Lupita, right? Quotation: The good Lupita um, kills the clone, clone Lupita, and <coughs> finds Jason. They go back upstairs. Everybody lives, Gabe lives, Zora lives, uh, Adelaide lives, and Jason lives, right? So, that's just the main synopsis, but stay until the end, because it the movie took a different turn, brother. When I say it, it took a turn, it made a whole U-turn, and I was like, What? Like everybody in the theater was, everybody in the theater was like, "Oh shoot!" Like, bro, swear I didn't see that coming. Like, 
I, me personally, I'm a horror fanatic. I did not see that ending coming. I did not see that coming. All right, boom. Got that initial review out of the way. My initial thoughts on it. Um, it had every intricate part that a horror movie has. It had the, why are you doing this? Like, that's so, like, why are you, or, bro, why? You know how you're sitting on the theater in the theater and you're watching the character do something you're like, that is so dumb, like, why would you do that? It had that aspect. It had jump scares. Um, it had moments of, of like, you know, where it was low and then it just, boom, action. It was low and then it was action. Um, it had every aspect that a good horror movie has. Um, originality, everything. Now, uh, I want to talk about the, uh, the, the meaning behind it or the satire behind it. Um, you know, with the good and the bad. Um, I personally, what I gathered from it was there's a good in all of us and there's a bad in all of us. There's a good side and a bad side, right? We've all done something that wasn't our good side and we've all done things that was, was our good side. Um, and it all, it, and what I gathered from it was that the bad side is always in the shadows, right? And also kind of like an alternate universe, right? So where you think that you have it so bad, there might be you know, a different version of you that has it worse off than you do. You know what I'm saying? Or <clears throat> when you're going through these these trials and tribulations, um, you know, you're taking for granted what God has gifted you with. You know, if you wake up with all your fingers or all your toes, you're able to walk, you're able to breathe, you're able to go outside and enjoy the sun, enjoy the breeze, enjoy the freedom of doing what you want to do, um, enjoy the freedom of making choices. No one's telling you exactly what to do. You know, we might be in a situation where you're working a nine to five, but no one is forcing you to make that nine to five or forcing you to do this. You have a choice. Not everybody has that. So I think, um, you know, the, the message was to, you know, don't take for granted what you do have because, you know, there's always that bad side that never gets a chance to come out to the light and sh and and gets to see the world, the world for that good side of you. Like what the what makes you good. It doesn't get a chance to see what makes you be a good person. It only gets to see the negative side of everything, which in turn makes them into a bad person or a bad side. So pretty much don't take life for granted um, is one of the, the, the messages I got from it. Also, what I got from it uh, was uh, to never, how can I put it? was to it to never ever 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 wish for somebody else's life right because in there there there's a part in the movie where uh uh Gabe's friend's wife is talking about how she had work done and she's like oh like I, we all can't be perfect like you talking about Lapita right and so you know making light out of it but when I thought about that I'm thinking like you know she wanted to be perfect but she wasn't happy in her own skin so she got surgery done now, I'm not gassing or, or doubting anybody who gets surgery, but the, I, I do believe that the movie was saying that appreciate who you are because somebody else definitely might have it worse. Like, you know, um, everybody had clones. So, like, Jason, the clone of Jason had his face burnt. You know what I'm saying? Like, never wish for somebody else's life and always be appreciative of the life that you do have and the opportunities that you do have and See the good things in your life. Not saying don't try to strive to be better, but to also, while you're striving to be better, be appreciative of what you have. Um, but yeah, anyway, that was my initial thoughts and, and reaction to the movie. I didn't want to give away too much. Too, I still feel like I gave away a little bit too much, but I didn't want to give away everything because I want you guys to go support Jordan Peele and go see us in the theaters, man. I'm telling you, do not bootleg this, y'all. I'm telling you, don't bootleg it. Don't, you know, no showbox it. Go see this movie. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. I loved it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review slash initial thoughts and feelings and initial reaction to the movie. Um, but yeah, this is Lionheart9472 signing off. And remember, L-O-E-N-T-U-D-I-E. Good, good. Go! Um, sorry, guys. Back. Uh, I just remembered that I forgot to give my initial... Uh, rating on that as well. So, 
I'm going to give Jordan Peele's Us a 8.8 .8 out of 10. All right? So, it gets a solid B+. Plus, um, only because... How can I say it without spoiling anything? Um, I'm giving it an 8.8. .8, well, pretty much I'm giving it the B plus because, um, one, I wish it was a little bit longer. Um, I wish we had a little bit more backstory of how uh, the clones or the shadows or the tethered got put together. How, like, how that whole thing happened. Like, how they get the DNA. Like, you know, so on and so forth. Um... Also, I would have liked it to be a little bit, more, like, have more parts. So, like, uh, have a little bit deeper storyline, right? But that's just, like I said, my initial my initial rating, my initial reaction to it. But, uh, yeah, I just want to put that in, so peace.